It's all about the uh, LG wing today. I don't know if you caught the video. I did. <laughs> of course you caught the video. Well, you were there for the live stream. Uh, it was all uh, very polished. Yes. I, I even saw Austin Evans in the live stream. He was in it. Believe it or not. He yeah. got the collared shirt. He was He was ready to go. Anyway, look, I did the unboxing video. You should definitely go check out the unboxing video. I'll tell you what, Will. Over here next to me on the table, I keep a few smartphones. All right? Yeah. And they're not the most practical smartphone. And they're not the most, uh, the safest bets of 2020 for your money in smartphones. Yeah. You know what they are? They're the most interesting smartphones to me. That's what this pile over here is. They're the smartphones that sort of snap me out of the zombie-like days that I was in as each similar style smartphone flowed over the tabletop. Yeah. Now, my experience, my life experience, is not that of the average person who maybe gets a new phone every so often. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's a meme. In fact, I'm made fun of for it. I mean, I could think of worse things to be made fun of for. However, you see it pop up. Great, he throws the other phone in the pile. Mm. Look at that, another smartphone. Well, it's kind of the job, it's kind of the gig. And I spoke to you about this before. It puts you in a kind of position where you get lulled to sleep. You kind of, there it is. It's, an, it's a 2020 uh, Galaxy S bingo. It's a 2020 iPhone bingo. You see what I'm saying? It's a slab. And there's nothing wrong with that. Look, if, 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 if we're out here, Will, and we're spending money, and it's a lot of money on a smartphone, especially right now, the way things are, I feel you. You, you don't want to take a chance on a yeah. gimmick. Let's call it a gimmick. You yeah. don't want to. However, there's always been this piece in the tech space. There's always been this imaginative component for me mm -hmm. in which... Kind of that's what kind of what dragged me into it in the first place. Like, wow, they could do that. Yeah, a little bit of uh, ambition. Wow, vision. they they could do that. Yeah. I remember when I was real young, my grandfather had a Walkman. Mm. He had a, a cassette Walkman. I didn't have one. He always he was really into the gadgets himself as an as an older guy. I thought it would, that that's music in your pocket right there. Life changing. You're carrying that music in your pocket right now. Yeah. It's on that thing. Yeah. Those type of moments, they feed your enthusiasm. And ultimately it's that enthusiasm that I feel when I come here is the thing that I'm able to distribute when it's there. Something's not always going to be there. Mm -hmm. There's a flow to it. So if I get my hands on a device that kind of perks me up like that, like a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. I'm going to notice. And you're probably going to notice too. Mm -hmm. And that's what this pile's about. Let me just explain the pile to you one yeah, more time. Yeah, just go through them. Let me just explain the pile to you. I mean, I, played with, I play with these almost every day, almost all of them. So, of course, we got the Surface Duo which I've been talking about. I can't, this thing, I can't figure it out in my brain. And I love that. I can't figure it out. You yeah. actually made this? Yeah. You actually made this? Well, not me, Panos. No, of course. And their team. You know, I'm yeah. speaking big picture here. I made a video today about the game streaming service, Microsoft's new game streaming service. Yeah. Or I shot it today. You, I mean, you may be able to watch it today, depending when it's done. It's not up yet. Uh, it was called, is it still called xCloud or is that the beta name? It's all going to become part of Xbox Game Pass. Game Pass Ultimate is what I was goofing with. I was playing Forza on this thing. And it was all streaming to the device. And because of the form fact, I had like a little laptop like that. And I had a controller for my little tiny, and I was like this. Yeah. I was like, put that in your pocket, little console. Yeah. All right. So there's one. This is the one I've been carrying in my pocket. This is the one right here that goes home with me. I got used to the feeling of this brick in my pocket, believe it or not. And then I flap the whole thing open sometimes, believe it or not. 
So that's the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Yeah, every so often I, I pop the whole okay. thing open. Okay. And I get on that big screen. And I talked to you about it before. And then I fold it over and it, it, it still has something for me. And people, they ask me, you know, you tap for the payment. They say, is that two phones? And I say, nah, 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 nah. And I unfold. They say, Psh, that happens with this phone. Uh, that gets the average person excited that that is something different. Uh, you can't say it's not different. Of course, beyond that, we had this guy over here. The littlest one. Flip open like this. The one-handed functionality. Of course, you want me to say it. It's the Motorola Razr 5G. A little bit confusing because the last one was 2020. Is this one 2020? It's a remake of the remake. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, fun and exciting. And you, you know it's just going to change your habit a little bit. You're just going to interact with your thing a little different because of the form factor. Now, some people in the audience are sitting there saying, but why? In fact, I heard no more but why than I heard today on this guy right here. This guy right here. This one is the strangest one. I got so much but why on social media. And you know what the thing is, Will? Let me tell you something. I'm going to put that in the frame. Let me tell you something right now. It's a lot of people in the world right now loving the why, but why. Living in the land of but why, but why, but why, but why. Scary. Every so often... Kind of nice to be on the side of why not. Mm. Why not, baby? I don't mind it. Every so often, you can't live your life like that. But every so often, you open the imagination, you crack open the top, you peel back your skull a little bit, and you just, you got a willingness to float. Yeah. You got a willingness to imagine something that isn't there right now. You got a willingness. I mean, I know most people in this segment don't look at it like art. But I do. I imagine the guy. I imagine the initial drawings. I imagine the initial concept there. But you're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. Mm. And him saying, oh, really? Look at me now. Yeah, look at me now. It's a real thing in the world. And I understand you use it and it's a tool and all the rest of it. But it can be fun. Mm. And it can be why not sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's a balance in life. It's a balance between why and why not. And you're constantly walking that line. But if you want to, I mean, this experience depends on an ability to move between those two different positions. Mm hmm if you're every time on the one side, I don't know that you can enjoy it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because I hear all the noise. You know, I see it. Mm -hmm. And there's like making things and then there's like leaving a comment. Yep. And they're not the same thing. Mm. And they may appear to be something similar, but they're really not. Mm. And once a person goes and starts to... And of course, I only make this. I make content. I, I make noises. You do. The, these people, these guys over here, they're, I mean, this is much, this is way harder. Yeah. Which is why when I had the interview, you know, I was trying to come from the place of appreciation. Mm -hmm. Even though you get the people, and I'm guilty because I've been a part of the whole tornado of this culture. I've been a big part of it, in fact. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm older, man. I'm an older man. Hopefully wiser as well. I'm older man, and I'm an older man. Yeah. Just want to make sure you didn't miss that. <laughs> oh, I see it. <laughs> no, I'm just, you learn as you go, man. And we're out here doing it in public, and we're making choices. And yeah. you got views, and, and you got work, and you got business, and you got bills. And you try to, you know, you try to do what you got to do. And, and every so often, you may go too far. You may... Uh, uh, you may add fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. You may put the conversation in such a place that you turn back and look at it after and you're like, oh, damn, I contributed to that. Yeah, That happens. And that's just being honest. Yeah. Uh, particularly with Apple, people, want, people will still talk about it because some of those videos were such... They were different at the time. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were kind of big and fun things for us to do. Mm-hmm. 
But I told you the story enough times when a person comes up to me in public and says, oh, I apologize. I I'm an iPhone user. And I'm sitting there. I don't care. Mm. I have as many iPhones in my house as I do Android phones. Like, I don't. It's not like that. Yeah. You're trying to find an angle sometimes. And when you're out there trying to make things, you step all over things sometimes unintentionally. Sometimes intentionally without the foresight to know all of the consequences that can come from it. And like I said previously, what you're actually contributing to. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, now I'm in a different position. My personal life has changed. My The work life has changed. Things have changed. And, and, and I'm filled with a lot more appreciation than I have been at other points. Mm -hmm. And it's given me this lens to, to look at this without the same kind of stringent guidelines that are supposed to be there or have been there mm -hmm. within the community for a period of time mm -hmm. where everything with all of the focus and content around a device is some type of judgment, some type of evaluation. Now you got to evaluate it. Mm -hmm. but it became the status quo that that was the whole point. And it's like, yes, you can appreciate something within the evaluation, but it's hard to give it points for imagination. At no point did somebody stop the review and go, but I gave it 10 points for imagination. Mm -hmm. So the older me now, the more experienced me, the new lens me, I, I give... I want to give an abundance of attention to imagination yes. within the application and creativity. Mm -hmm. Creativity, man. This is creative. I don't, I don't care. It's creative. I don't care. You guys got to understand, I can show you a video. I should be able to shoot something. Anybody should. That doesn't necessarily imply, go buy it right now. Like, enjoy it. Figure it out. You're, there's all, you're, you're the only you. Mm -hmm. you know if something's going to be practical for you or not. You don't have to go and... I mean, you can. That's the beauty of the thing, man. You can go around and police the thing. You can go around and beat people over the head to agree with you. You can say, I mean, I see it in the replies. It's dumb and you're stupid because you like it and you're dumb. It's like, okay. Yeah. It's a great combo. Awesome combo. Meanwhile, some dude over there is tinkering with tiny little components and springs and 200,000 opening and closing, and that's you. Mm -hmm. That's your comment. That's what you put your stamp on. I just changed the place I put my stamp. That's it. Now, I'm really focused on coming at it from that perspective, and some people may enjoy that. Some people may not, but that's cool with me. So what I want to say about this device, I don't want to redo the unboxing video here. Obviously, I don't want to... I mean, go, you can go watch it. It's much more f formulated, obviously, to get a better glimpse at the actual device. But I'll tell you something. This has invigorated me in such a way, in such a fashion. And I know there's a lot of people that are out there saying, show me the use case. What can I do? You might want to fill the gaps. You can use your imagination to fill this this per, this individual's imagination that put the thing together. You imagine what you can do with it. I mean, mm -hmm. there's been a number of scenarios presented, some of them better than others. I think when you've got something good and cool, it's inherently going to be polarizing mm -hmm. because it elicits a reaction. I mean, that's one thing for certain. People are paying attention. They're curious. And that's the first hurdle in 2020. Even getting the curiosity to bubble up. Everybody got their head down. It's a tough world right now. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it on that level. And sometimes I'm just, sometimes what I'm getting at is the, the practical conversation. It could be a bit of a drag. The, you know, but wait. I could pick up a, I could pick up a blah, 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 throw them, you know. Mm-hmm. So many good, you know, I'm not going to spend my money on, it's a, you know, it's a gimmick, whatever. I, let me just, let me just say this. Okay. 
Let me just say this. This is the last thing on this. The commenting, the commenting is a good thing. The commenting, the voices, people should be speaking, inventing, and doing all the rest of it. I can only speak for myself. And I just know that what I put down and what I put out, and I've absolutely made mistakes, all right? So I'm not claiming that I've done it perfectly. But the attempt is to just be able to stand on what you put out as a representation of you, whatever that is. You just stand on it and say, yeah, okay, there, there. Mm -hmm. I did that. And as a person who has made mistakes, I'm just saying, if you're out and you got the comments and everything else, that's you. That's your name. That's what you're putting out. Mm -hmm. That's what you're putting out. So just there's a recognition there, and we're all gonna we're all gonna be on both sides at different times, and everything else. But that's just me developing, changing, taking responsibility, everything else. Appreciation, appreciation. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool things. Cool things make my job so much more exciting. Yep. I'll tell you that right now. We got a sponsor today. How about that? How about that little segue? <laughs> Express VPN. Express VPN yeah. will bring you some cool things to watch, possibly, because you may have run out. You may have been at home so long right now that you you just went through everything that's uploaded on your local version of Netflix. You just watched all of it. And now you're trying to expand your horizon. Well, you can boot up ExpressVPN, and that will unlock the different regions for Netflix that actually has the capabilities to unlock a lot more content. And it's not just Netflix. It's a number of different services that exist that if you just all of a sudden go through a VPN, you unlock a whole new universe of content. Mm -hmm. And there's other advantages, too. I mean, they got a lot of them listed there. BBC, Prime Video, HBO, uh, Spotify, ESPN, etc. But as mentioned, it's not just related to content. It's also your own privacy, your history. You've got everything pumping through the VPN rather than directly to your system or your IP. There's an extra layer of privacy associated with it. These guys have uh, what they say rock solid privacy at blazing speeds and a number of different uh, potential regions that you can connect to. Mm -hmm. Everything's encrypted. You can get help anytime. I actually think you get a chance, you get a deal, in fact, if you want to go ahead and give it a try for yourself to protect yourself with a VPN, which, by the way, we use VPNs. I use a VPN. To protect yourself with the VPN that I use and trust, use my link, expressvpn.com slash later, and you will get three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash later. Visit expressvpn.com slash later. I will put the, the link in the description or in the show notes for the audio-only version. You can go check out the specifications for yourself on the website. Uh, but like I said, this is a cool thing. Unlock content. Also, protect your online activity. Link in the description, expressvpn.com slash later. Don't forget the slash. You get the deal. Mm. Slash Lou later. Holy moly, it's been a lot of news as well, Will. I knew I I I, I brought it all in the beginning there. I went all all in. Uh, it was the poker match. I these were my poker chips. You went I pushed all in. Oh, I pushed man. all the innovative and interesting and strange phones. I pushed them in. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, neither was I. Um, but however, there's so much that happened over the weekend. So many developments in news that we we, we got a lot to talk about here today. Mm -hmm. To kick it off, TikTok appears to have sort of figured out its situation in the U.S. Sort of. I say sort of because we're still lacking a lot of information about the specifics relating to this deal. It appears that Oracle has won the bid in the United States and Microsoft has lost it. Mm. Now, Oracle, the original rumors were around Oracle as a sort of team approach alongside other investors that were already invested in TikTok, Sequoia and General Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting part or the piece that's missing is exactly what role Oracle is going to take within the operations of TikTok because the way that it's been reported in a number of places is as a partnership and not an acquisition. Seemingly implying that it will not be 
a direct transfer, but instead almost some sort of a overseeing body located within the U.S. that the government happens to be okay with. Mm -hmm. Now, that piece is also getting a lot of coverage, the piece of the government happens to be okay with, and rightfully so, because Ellison, the head of Oracle, does have a pre-existing relationship with Trump mm -hmm. and I believe has hosted fundraisers in the past for Trump. There's a relationship there. And believe it or not, as far as personal relationships are concerned, there aren't that many between Trump and the various heads of mega Silicon Valley companies. But mm -hmm. this is one of them. And this guy's real. This guy's got a few bucks. Allison and Oracle. So we got to report previously. We're hearing that China would have rather had TikTok in the U.S. just die than sell it. Yep. That was a report came out yesterday, I believe. So you're sitting there saying, well, what, what took place to allow this to happen? So my head starts swirling around a little bit, as it would. Yours the same. Maybe the characteristics of this deal were able to satisfy all parties... Trump gets to satisfy Ellison, who's a pal, a supporter, mm. <laughs> a pal. I don't know if he's a pal. He's They're a supporter. He's a supporter. And maybe he also gets to appease China to a certain extent because maybe inside of the deal is not this kind of sale, let's say, but instead... Almost, a, almost some sort of policing that Oracle will do and have the wherewithal and capability to ensure that the security measures are met. Mm. Trump gets to do Ellison a favor. Ellison gets to cut a deal with those other investors that want to be in some, have some level of control or still be involved in the success story that is TikTok. And then ultimately hit the last piece, which is getting the Chinese government to agree to it mm -hmm. because they had come out and said, you're not shipping this algorithm, although yep. the algorithm might not even be part of the deal. Mm -hmm. So my guess, based on hearing who got it and who didn't, and just the limited amount of information that we have, is that the deal was structured in such a way that still lets ByteDance have some kind of interest or still lets China have some kind of interest, but that that interest would from a security perspective, meet certain criteria. Right. That as far as the flow of data is concerned, they would have zero interest. Right. Some kind of way. That's my speculation. It's all speculation because the details are slim. Mm -hmm. And that's all we're going to be able to get at the moment. And it's constantly updating. And it's constantly updating. And and with these type of deals, as you're gonna we're gonna talk about in the next story, there's also things that can happen to put a wrench in these, even when they're partway through. Mm -hmm. So this is the way that it looks for now. Plenty of details still need to emerge. And we'll be on top of it, because that's what we do, Will. Mm -hmm. Speaking of things we're on top of, NVIDIA. We're on top of NVIDIA. Who wouldn't want to be right now? NVIDIA just spent a cool 40 billy on mm -hmm. ARM, acquiring ARM. This deal's been talked about for a while. This is another one where... Some are speculating it, it may be difficult to get the correct approvals only because you're, jo you're joining forces to very influential companies. Potentially tremendous power here mm -hmm. between NVIDIA. I'm not saying that's what should happen. I mean, I think they can do some amazing things together. Obviously, if you're, well, if you're unaware, ARM, this is a company that designs the architecture for chips, chipsets, and then licenses that architecture to various manufacturers, including some of your favorite brands. And then a fee is associated with that licensing deal. Well, of course, me, I get to thinking, man, they got all this uh, amazing property here. They're creating all, all of these designs that we're benefiting from, particularly on mobile. Although, of course, this architecture is going to be in more and more desktop or at least laptop based yeah. computing devices very very shortly but of course the mobile market is enormous and i get to thinking wow nvidia has the wherewithal potentially to actually manufacture these things without the licensing agreement or at least 
I mean, there could be a licensing agreement in place. I don't know how they're going to work the inner workings of the two companies, but that would be a massive strategic advantage mm -hmm. over those other independent companies who have to purchase these deals. Mm -hmm. And this is in everything. So the scope of it is enormous. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Apparently, ARM isn't going to be disrupted all that much, not anytime soon. Mm. And that's according to... Uh, that's according to the word directly from NVIDIA. They're going to do their business the way they do their business. Now, ARM was recently transacted all the way back in 2016. All, not all the way back at all, just a few years ago for $31 billion, but it was SoftBank who bought them. Mm -hmm. SoftBank is big, diversified kind of uh, investment. Uh, I mean, it's huge. I don't even know how much money they're managing, but they got businesses in everything, mobile, internet, energy, robot, business, whatever. Invested all over the place. It's hard to even keep it together. They just made a cool $9 billion in four years just on this deal. Kind of wild. Mm. Although somehow $9 billion looks small when you look at $40 billion. Yeah. I don't know how that goes. NVIDIA, obviously, uh, leader in GPUs. They go head-to-head -head with AMD. Uh, they haven't really done been able to do much in mobile. This unlocks that. If this mm. thing gets done, it could be exciting. They have... The wherewithal. They have the knowledge on the... Definitely on the gaming side. Mm -hmm. And on the hardware side. And on the marketing side. As you mentioned earlier. Yeah. They're big time in marketing. Yeah. So this Compared could be... To its competitors. A really powerful partnership. Apparently, the word is... The word is AI. That seems to be a huge area of focus for nvidia nvidia says it will invest in building a new ai research center in cambridge where arm is currently based their offices will stay there nvidia is positioning the acquisition as setting up the next stage of ai computing both nvidia and arm see opportunities for growth in enabling ai software that can run on arm chips from those on tiny smartphones to huge servers so it remains to be seen how they're going to interface assuming they get all the approvals necessary However, this is huge news for NVIDIA. It's huge news for ARM and the implications. Well, as I mentioned, could be huge. Mm. The implications could be huge. We have a new report here on 9to5Mac about the upcoming iPhone 12. It's a word from Ming Chi, and he is talking about a narrow notch, mm. which is something that a lot of people were wondering about. At what point, when and where does Apple shrink the notch how soon will it happen? As we've seen other manufacturers go different directions, very few are maintaining a notch of this scale anymore on the Android side. Apple, on the other hand, they have their sophisticated face unlock technology, face ID, and it does require a number of sensors that they fit into the notch. Well, according to Ming-Chi, apparently at least for the 5.4 inch model, which is the small one, they're going to find a way to shrink the notch a little bit. And it's probably most important on that model, seeing as how you have less room to work with in the first place. And any notch is going to occupy a greater ratio of the overall form factor of the phone. Now, he reported on a couple of other interesting things, too, uh, suggesting that this upcoming event, I guess it's tomorrow when we're filming this. Yes. Uh, however, it's today when you're watching this. It's the September 15th event. It's not only going to be about the... Apple Watch Series 6, but also the iPad Air, which is expected to feature Touch ID in the power button instead of Face ID. So this could speak to a diminishment in the uh, Face ID approach from Apple, mm -hmm. that maybe it's becoming less important to them across all their devices, and maybe there's been a request for Touch ID, or maybe recent happenings in the world have pushed a move back towards Touch ID. We don't really know, but uh, apparently... More new iPad models will adopt the side touch ID starting in 2021. This, of course, again, according to Ming-Chi. Details are unclear, but a future iPad Pro could have touch ID in the power button to go with face ID. You can also have the two of them together, which right. is my favorite uh, implementation. Yeah. Both options, easy to unlock. Uh, the last piece, and this has been talked about, I've seen this on Twitter, is talking about 120 hertz displays. And the word right now is you're not going to see it. 
you're not going to see 120 hertz. And there's some people saying absolute deal breaker. Forget about iPhone without 120 hertz. Uh, that's not that's not me. I like a fast refresh phone, and I notice, especially immediately after switching back, and I try so many phones that it becomes obvious to me. However, it doesn't completely wreck a phone to not have 120. It's not the phone is not useless if you don't have 120. Mm. And and it's also important to note from a person who's used a variety of refresh rates, they do impact battery life. Yes. And Apple, they the word was previously they had to shrink the battery a little bit from the 11 in order to fit in some components for the 5G capabilities. And they were just like, you know what? I mean, I'm obviously this is not official yet, but mm -hmm. assuming that they don't go with the 120 hertz, they made a compromise. They chose. Of course, it's up to the end user to determine how important it is to them. I'm spoiled by the fact that I got all these phones to choose from. Mm. I do love a fast refresh, but I think there's a lot of iPhone buyers that are going to be just fine with 60. Yeah, or why can't they bump it up to 90? Maybe 90. You know, that's still sufficient. Are you a 90 guy? Yeah. All right, there you go. 5G, 90 hertz refresh. Why Never not? mind Ming Chi. Willie Doo's telling you what it's going to be. Yeah, let's make it happen. Boys. Never mind. And girls. Last one about iPhone. iPhone makers are said to be among the winners in a U.S. $6.6 billion India plan. This is, of course, on the back of a lot of the stuff that we've covered on the show. India increasingly moving towards the position, the hub position for smartphone manufacturing, not just domestically, but with a target in the future of potentially being a global hub for smartphone manufacturing. This thing just keeps getting juicier, right? Indian government expected to ratify a plan aimed at bringing 150 billion in smartphone production over the next five years. That's USD, 150 billion, big, big numbers. And they're taking advantage of the timing because of the US-China beef or, you know, whatever you want to call it, dispute, discussions trade yeah whatever they say oh now's the right time we incentivize hard we get the taiwan manufacturers in here we get we get the korean manufacturers in here and that's what they've done mm -hmm. so this new plan let's see here apple's major iphone assemblers are among the companies expected to win approval to participate in a us 6.6 billion stimulus program to bring manufacturing to india Uh, this is going to, you have Apple's primary supplier, Foxconn Technology, Wistron, Pegatron. The Production Linked Incentive Program, also known as PLI, brings manufacturing incentives. It will rise each year in an ongoing effort to entice the world's biggest smartphone brands to make their products in India and to export as well. Besides Apple, those Apple contractors, not Apple themselves, but it might as well be Apple, Samsung Electronics is the only other applicant. And this is where things get really weird. Or as I like to say, squirrely. Mm. Which I don't really know what that means or if that's an official type of terminology. But I like to picture a squirrel, a rambunctious one. And yeah. you can't, they're tough to read. Yeah. It's tough to know they're what they're up to. Squirreling around. Exactly. Yeah. China's largest smartphone makers, Huawei and BBK, BBK, of course, Oppo, Vivo, you know the drill, are absent on the application. <whistles> Why is that? I don't know. My understanding was they were doing some assembly there. But then I read the story that there's some delays at the border getting the parts they need to continue to do the assembly. Then, of course, we've covered and also paid attention to ongoing disputes between the nation, those two nations. Very interesting times right now, and, hu and and again, huge implications for the future, like many of our other stories here today. I told you it's a big news day. Yeah, a lot of business. It's a thoughtful move by the government aimed at wooing Apple to bring significant iPhone manufacturing to India because when the iPhone maker shifts, an entire ecosystem follows. Here's a, here's, here's a, here's a quote from Harry Om Rai. Chairman and founder of Lava International. That's a homegrown smartphone maker in India. The next five years will be dramatic and India could become the new China in phone manufacturing. You know I had to get that quote in. Mm. And you could have that as a title as well because it's a salacious type of title. Yeah, It's an attention grabber. 
I'll put that in the thumbnail. I mean, you could put it in there. And apparently this huge investment is not only interested, as I mentioned, at the domestic market. They really believe, they really believe that they can become number one in mobile manufacturing. Mm -hmm. They really believe they can supply the world. Yeah. That's big time. I mean, it's not right now. I mean, they're growing. I mean, it's, it's not like right now. Rocket fuel. Yeah, it's not right now. Soon. Well, that's the word. Yeah. I didn't say it. You did. Once again, will he do predictions? Microsoft X Cloud. I talked about it off the top of the show because I was goofing around. I was driving to Forza. I even played Halo Master Chief Collection. Collection. I booted up Halo 2. Halo 2. I was just right goofing. On. Yeah. I was just a guy. One of the better Halos. I used the scope a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they're launching tomorrow or today at the point at which you're watching this exclusively on Android phones and tablets. They couldn't get it sorted out with Apple in time, which is unfortunate. The Apple users will not get a chance to try it out. I played it today. I can't talk about it yet. Somehow, it's still, see, it's still beta now for well, me. Well, actually, you can talk about it. Oh, I can There's talk no about embargo. it now. There's no, no okay, no, the embargo yeah. is it's over. It's I, can, I can talk about it. Okay, so amazing experience launching into a true Xbox game instantly. Kind of messes with you a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're still streaming the game, and there are some limitations to the experience based on that. Uh, for example, you get a little audio glitch here and there, or uh, a little lag possibly here and there. It's super early right now, and I'm sure there's plenty of optimizations going on. Mm-hmm. But the promise, the potential for me, the idea of it, to play games in a Netflix-like setting where you can just boot it up, 150 titles, You know what? I feel like playing that. And you don't have to have them all installed in one place. And it's on a device that you have with you all the time anyways. So I played it on this whole pile of devices over here, including the Fold, the Z Fold 2, which, by the way, the speakers on this thing are bananas. And, of course, as mentioned, I played it on a Surface Duo in the laptop mode on the upper display. And I had fun. There will be a video about it that you'll be able to go check out. But it's launching tomorrow in a number of countries, 22 countries. It's going to be Austria, Belgium, Canada, Czech, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Slovakia, Spain, South Korea, Sweden, Switzerland, United Kingdom, United States. Wow. I did that as fast as I could. That's so if you're in that group, impressive. you may want to give it a crack. The EA Play titles are not there yet, though they are working on it. The whole thing is a work in progress. I'll be honest with you. It's a work in progress. It's a fun one to participate with, though. Yeah. So, I, I, if you, out of the games I tried, I would say boot up Forza because there's a thing about the controller input on that game, which is, it's a little more forgiving for a streaming service. So, just give it a shot, and I'm sure other titles are going to, but we'll we'll see what happens. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it some more. Yeah. And they're still working on on-screen controls as well. So you will need an Xbox controller for now. Mm. Some type of controller because most games don't have the on-screen controls at the moment. I think right. Minecraft does. Anyway, another Xbox story. This one's about the co- upcoming consoles. I don't know if you caught this one. This is another one I saw floating about. Xbox Series S will not run Xbox One X enhanced versions of backwards compatible games. This is really in the weeds, Mm. okay? They just, I suppose you want the buyers to know what to expect if they get this Series S, the budget model, $299. Mm. 4K is out of the question. Get it out of your head. So if it's some older title that was optimized for Xbox One X with a higher resolution target, performance target, it's not going to run on the Series S. Instead, well, it's not going to run like that. Yeah. It's it's just the resolution. Yes. Okay. The Xbox One S, which was the cheaper version of the previous generation, will run just fine at the specification supplied. In fact, it will be even a little better in some cases because you have uh, an improvement in processing and so forth. So you might have more textures and things like this. So... The Xbox Series S won't run the Xbox One X enhanced versions of Xbox One and Xbox 360 games. Now, 
those enhanced versions, I don't know if they were just resolution. Well, there may have been some texture stuff, some lighting. I don't. There may have been okay. some other aspects to it. Okay. Yeah. Just to get that in there. Uh, however, it will still be a step above the Xbox One S because it's going to have improved texture filtering, higher and more consistent frame rates, faster load times, and auto HDR. So it's. They're just saying it's better than the Xbox One S, but in some circumstances, it might not be better mm. than the Xbox One X. I know it's right. tough to keep it together, and I'm yeah. not talking about the Xbox Series X. Of course, the Xbox Series X is better than all of them. Yes. So they're just saying in, these, in this set of circumstances, it may not do what your Xbox One X is already capable of doing. Yeah. I guess they're just preparing us to... They're just preparing. You know, yeah. Expectations. They're preparing. They're saying if you had an X anything in the past, if it was a 1X, you need to get a Series X. Mm -hmm. And if you had an S version in the past, you were happy, this would be just fine for you. Or just get ready to deal with uh, not being able to play those titles. This has nothing to do with titles going forward. Yeah. This is titles in the back catalog. Or just get a Series X and then forget about everything. Forget about everything. Yeah. You get the big, the bigger box and you're living your life. Yep. YouTube has launched its TikTok rival YouTube shorts initially in India. It's the first place we're seeing it. And it makes sense to me because they had the real TikTok ban. Mm -hmm. The real deal. None of this uh, flip-flop, wishy-washy, I don't know what I want to do Yeah, kind of thing. This was night-night. Mm -hmm. Holy moly. And so YouTube rushed to get this product out. Instagram did the exact same thing in that mar market. This is uh, 15 seconds or less short form videos using a new set of creator tools, including a multi-segment camera, similar to TikTok, speed controls, timer countdown. They've also got a big music library because YouTube has one of those. Hmm. They kind of have an advantage there trying to get people into the short, short, short form video. So you're going to edit the whole thing. They're trying to kind of lower the barrier to entry on content creation, which TikTok has done a great job of. And so you're going to have this, whatever it is, plus button right within the app if you're seeing this currently on Android. By the way, Android first, iOS later. Not such a big deal in India. Not a huge iOS footprint anyways. Mostly Android user base. Uh, it's also going to have an impact on the home page. There's going to be a new room, a new row, sorry, on the home, YouTube home page for watching just short videos. And you will actually navigate those videos in the exact same fashion you did on TikTok. You will scroll mm. like this up and down. You know, the, the uh, addictive the addiction, nature, yeah. the addictive nature of all that. So they decided against they decided against this, any kind of separate app. It will happen within the app and it'll be a side piece to whatever's already happening on YouTube. Now this has no this has no bearing on the US, by the way. This is not scheduled to launch there this is kind of what surprised me i would have assumed that this was coming everywhere and soon but there being kind of the official line from youtube is this is a test we're figuring this yeah, out just like a soft launch we're gonna see how it goes and i'm curious to see what the response is because it is quite a bit different from what youtube currently is now youtube has adopted features from other social media stories showed up and they get used more or less i mean i don't watch stories all that much on youtube but i'm sure people do they brought in community posts. They, I mean, YouTube is always paying attention to trying to change things, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Uh, we'll see how this goes down. They get to test in India with, uh, you know, a defined subset of people and then take their learnings and maybe apply it to the rollout if they do choose to do it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I know people are going to want it regardless. Mm -hmm. People love this stuff, Well, Yeah. They got the songs right in there. They put up the short videos, 15 seconds. So if, if all goes well in India, and also if, you, if you're if you in India watching this, I'm curious if you have the feature, if the feature showed up for you yet, and if you see yourself using it. And, and, and also what the percentage split that you would watch shorts on YouTube versus long form or longer. It's hard to call it long form. I mean, there's a lot of like three minute, four minute yeah. stuff on YouTube, but... Uh, Instagram may finally let us add links to posts. To posts. Hmm. 
it's this is a really weird story. This is a thing that drove me crazy since I started using the thing because I'm always you know promoting a video or something yeah. like this, sending people elsewhere. For a while, I was in the camp of oh, check the bio. Yeah. Oh. Link in the bio. Oh. Yeah, it's gross. It was bad, man. And then I just started saying, go check the channel. Or sometimes just new video. And that would be that. And, but I always, I always dreamed of a future in which I could just post a link directly there in the post. Mm. And people could go straight where I told them. That's the dream. It's a dream. Instagram has been against it for the record because, well, they want to sell you advertising. So they don't want you easily moving people off the site. Nobody really does. None of these players really do. Mm -hmm. And in the early days, they said, we don't want to cloud. You know, this is a pretty, pretty place. Everybody stays in Instagram. You're in Instagram yeah. land. Don't go linking yeah. elsewhere. But then they kind of slipped up a little bit. Well, they didn't slip up. It was on purpose. But they let the links in a little bit on the stories mm. with the swipe up. Now, apparently, they may take it to the next stage. And the reason we know this is because there's been a patent filing. And the patent filing is really interesting because the only way in which it suggests it would allow you to use a link is if you pay for it. Oh. $2. Right per, within the patent. Per link? Per link. Scroll down. Oh. Look at this. There it is. Hey, everyone. I just started designing my own jewelry. Come check it out on my new website. Then the link. And then it asks, do you want to activate that link in your caption for two bucks? Hmm. Crazy. Weird kind of advertising. Just pay for a link. It's just like straight up money. Just straight up. Yeah. Two bucks. And you, I would do it. You want to know what's crazy? I would do it. Yeah. Now, I'm not I mean, a regular, $2. I'm not a, the, the average user promoting different things that I'm doing online. Yeah. But in a, I can make a case like in a lot, in a lot of scenarios that that could be helpful or useful uh -huh. or better for the audience yeah. to just have a link right there. So an interesting patent, uh, Instagram would obviously make a boatload of money. I can understand people being upset. People would say, how dare you hmm. ask for two bucks and then give other people the potential to link. But hmm. I mean, we've seen all kinds of boosted post stuff on Facebook and Instagram. Hmm. They're businesses. And this would save a lot of people a lot of time because I've had this conversation with others in the past. Hmm. And, you, you know, a lot of people who do this stuff professionally could really make a case for spending the two bucks every time. Yeah. yeah. But for the average person, I can see that being annoying. Mm -hmm. IKEA has partnered with ROG. On affordable gaming furniture. You know, we covered recently the Logitech gaming chair. They partnered up with Herman Miller. And that clip on later clips, it got a couple of views on it. People are interested. Yeah. I'm sitting on the Herman Miller Embody chair for a long time now. And they put a special color on it and they call it gaming. And they put Logitech on it. And they put an X in it. That's the big deal when they put the, the X. Because it's Herman Miller X Logitech. And oh, it's like, okay. I'll pay three times as much because there's yeah. an X. It feels limited, yeah. special. Anyway, they did change some things about it. Not much, though. Right? The material is definitely different. The mechanical components look to be the same. And they got the whole gaming world talking because everybody wants a better chair because everyone's trapped at home. Mm. So this sort of opened the door to these types of collaborations. So I can't say I'm surprised that IKEA aligns with ROG. They could do chairs, desks, some kind of gaming accessories, lamps. It's a whole culture, Will. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, uh, I figured. Yeah, it's a whole culture. So they're working together on uh, affordable furniture and accessories with a line of around 30 products for gaming lovers. They're currently doing the design work right now. Uh, the range will launch in China February 2021 and will be available in the U.S. and elsewhere by October 2021. Are you excited? Um, I would like to see the branding for it. Mm. That would be pretty interesting. They're, they couldn't be further apart. Mm -hmm. IKEA, this simple yeah. thing over here, and then ROG, RGB, full blast. Laser, sharp. Yes. You know. Angles. Yeah, yeah, a lot of those. So, yeah, you're right. That would be an interesting collaboration. We got to wait and see. Microsoft's first Android device truly upgrades the Android Auto experience. This is a story about, you know, people are trying to figure out what, what to do with these. 
people are uh, having to reconfigure their, their minds using this device, mm. those that have it. And they're finding, sort of discovering situations that are really a lot better with a dual screen setup. Mm. Then and and they're in it's in places that you may not have imagined it. And these photos are a good demonstration of the car and what you could do in the car with a dual screen device. And so there's a couple of different scenarios here, but this person has an electric vehicle, so they have plug share up on the secondary display, but you can output from the port, from the USB port to Android Auto. Hmm. So you get your Android Auto with your nav and your notifications on your in-car display, and then that frees up your other two displays here on the Surface Duo to do different things. Hmm. It can be a map. It can be traffic. It can be tracking for charge stations. It can be uh, music or multimedia. Here's an example of Chargeway on one and Electrify America on the other. Mm. I guess these are different charging platforms. Now, you, know, you, you may not even need to have an in-car. If you get a mount for this thing, as the first image implies, you may not even have to have a screen in your car mm. because now you can have the nav on one side and the media on the other. Right. And you can be less distracted because you don't have to, you're not switching between apps. You just leave them open. So this thing continues. It continues to find a home mm -hmm. in unexpected places. And it may not be as uh, great as something like this to hold up to your face and to be comfortable with. And, and you know, the traditional easy form factor. By the way, this, of course, does this. Do I need to remind you? It also does that. However, in certain circumstances, it's really turning out to be better than what any smartphone can be mm. in certain circumstances. And that's, it's interesting to me. This was your favorite story of the day. Feds seize OnePlus Buds, mistaking them for counterfeit AirPods. And I like this story because it actually has an update. And I think this update is going to be interesting to you. So this was floating around as far back, I believe, Friday or definitely by Saturday. Mm-hmm. Because I noted it, I was like, I got to talk about this. This is crazy. There were, uh, I don't know what the total number is, but a large number of OnePlus Buds seized by U.S. Customs and Border Protection this weekend. It was at JFK uh, International in New York. And they were proud of it. The CBP officer seized 2,000, okay, there you go, 2,000 units, counterfeit Apple AirPods earbuds from Hong Kong destined for Nevada at an air cargo facility, the agency wrote in the press release, if the merchandise were genuine, the manufacturer's suggested retail price would have been $398,000. Mm. They're just so matter of fact about, yeah, they're fake AirPods, knockoff AirPods. Yeah, the feds are like, yes, finally, we got one. That's it. Yeah. And of course, it's a different product. You brought the product to me over here. And I wonder if that shipment had have been in blue if the same thing would have happened. Because it's obvious, yeah, they look a lot like AirPods. I mean, you have the branding on the box. Yep. There are OnePlus products. But it's it does say something about the, the general form factor of these things and how similar they all are and how inspired they all are by, by what Apple did with the AirPods. I mean, that's just a fact. Yeah. And so to, uh, to U.S. Customs and Border Protection Group, they just say, oh, there's another one. Mm -hmm. There's another one, whether it's OnePlus or somebody else. Now, OnePlus, they went and, and made some tweets kind of joking about it. Mm. They seem to have played it pretty well. However, I don't know that they're actually going to get their merchandise, and I don't know that this will ever end up being purchased by end users. And the reason for that is because I go to the update on this article on Ars Technica and they actually got a reply from Border Protection. And listen to this. You would have thought Border Protection would have said, oh, yes, we've updated. These are obviously not Apple products. They're OnePlus products. But no, listen to this. Upon examining the shipment in question, a CBP import specialist determined that the subject earbuds appeared to violate Apple's configuration trademark. Apple has configuration trademarks on their brand of earbuds and has recorded those trademarks with CBP. An agency spokesperson said, based on that determination, CBP officers at JFK have seized the shipment 
Under, and there's a specific uh, citing, CBP seizure of the earbuds in question is unrelated to the images or language on the box. A company does not have to put an Apple wordmark or design on their products to violate these trademarks. The importer will have many opportunities through the adjudication process to provide evidence that their product does not violate the relevant recorded trademarks. They're saying, yeah, we, yeah, we looked at Apple's trademark and we think it's too close. Crazy. They uh, doubled down on it. That's wild. How does this stuff ever get in then? Yeah. And you can imagine if OnePlus had to adjudicate every time, mm -hmm. good luck. So it's a wild story. Maybe they got to ship more blue ones. Yeah. Only blue from here on out. But they're not alone. I mean, there's a lot of white earbuds out there. By the way, here's the regular. I have the regular AirPods over here. Regular AirPods. OnePlus buds in blue. I think these ones are at least far enough apart. The case here on the OnePlus buds is kind of in between the AirPods and AirPods Pro, but it is different. And as many, like, what is an ear? What are you going to do with an ear? But how much more can you do with this shape? What more can you do? You can make it a box, but then it's harsh in the pocket. Mm -hmm. It's just got to be a curved thing that holds little items that go in your ear. Mm -hmm. it's kind, you're kind of limited, but anyway, we'll see what happens. Anybody, that's, that was a hot story, by the way. Mm -hmm. I doubt we'll hear anything else about it. Uh, you know what? I should reach out to OnePlus and ask them directly. Yeah. And maybe I'll do that before the next show. I'll send a couple DMs and, mm. and see if there's any other information on that or if it's ever happened before. Mm. Uh, this one, this is a bit of a preview. This crazy chair has been making rounds. It's a scorpion chair. We've done some wild setups in the past involving some pretty elaborate places to sit and various monitors and gaming PCs. And we've just, you know, completely outlandish stuff we've yep. done in the past and of course we have no intention of stopping we're just in between a couple of different projects at the moment we did the ultimate thirty thousand dollar gaming pc setup this is a fun video it seemed like ages ago i love the intro and the music and the lights well don't give the whole video away well people want to go okay. check it out for themselves however we got plans to do something more and this giant scorpion gaming chair is a real level up on the thing we used last time. And if you scroll down to these GIFs, this thing is way more adjustable on, on a bunch of levels. This looks totally sci-fi. You walk in and some dude is making those adjustments. Ooh. and Oh, geez, man. I mean, you can bring the monitors in tight to your face. You can bring the keyboard unit. You can be a lot lower and flatter on this one. It's... Look at how look at the motorized monitor portion. We didn't have that on the previous versions. The whole thing just had the one axis going on. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we got a plan for this. Willie Doo's got a plan. This is called the IW-SK Zero Gravity Esports Gaming Chair. Willie Doo has a plan. Yeah. So I, I'm diligently working on it. Things are going to happen. We have a, a setup coming. I will be sitting in that creature very shortly. So definitely keep it locked for that. Last story today, it's another Willy Do special. Uh, big Oculus guy. Uh, all, every big time fan. I come in, I just, you know, I just try to get some work done, write a few emails, Oculus, this, Oculus, that. And so I'm just going to let you take it away. This is your story oh, right here. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, Oculus Quest, if you don't know, it's um, a VR headset that is has just one cool feature, which is wireless. And that is the. Well, it's also problem. affordable too, right? Very affordable, yeah. And it's uh, it's amazing. I, I can't speak nothing less of that. Um, I've been using it to play uh, Half Life Alex, and um, you use this software called Virtual Desktop, which just mimics your desktop. But and then the Wi-Fi is just like a stream, and it's just no no latency at all, and it's just wireless. So that's what makes it cool. Well, you got an all-new one right now. You got the Quest 2. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, so they made sure. some improvements to it. It's your favorite VR headset, I guess. Would Could you say that? I would say so, yeah. Because it's wireless. It's a bit more affordable. The new one is going to be almost 4K display, and the RAM is going to improve to 6 gigabytes. Facebook kind of leaked it by accident, and then they admitted to having leaked it and said, yeah, it's coming out really soon. They got a video kind of showing it off. And... I agree with you, by the way. The wireless or the all-in-one type of thing could really 
I mean, that, that should be the thing to push VR forward because it's really intimidating with the cables and the yeah, yeah. giant gaming PC and everything else. Now, this, of course, is going to have its limitations as a consequence, but you say it's worth it. And uh, so I'm, I listened to you, Will. The yeah. demonstration videos were scheduled for September 16th and September 17th. The Facebook Connect conference for developers begins September 16th. So we're probably going to see something, the, uh, the SKU maybe $399, $499, somewhere in there. Uh, apparently, the storage is going to be doubled up to 256 gigs from 128, uh, about 2K resolution per eye. That's how you get up to your 4K res. Big and deal. that's that's yeah. 50% greater than the first Quest. Yes. Big deal. So that's quite a few more pixels for mm -hmm. you yeah. to mess around with. I can tell you're, you can barely contain yourself. So, uh, yeah, it's, there's an, the event is official, full reveal. Facebook admitted to it. It is happening Wednesday at 1 p.m. That's a lot of things on Wednesday. Oh, man. Isn't the PlayStation thing on Wednesday? Yes. Are we going to do a live stream? Uh, are you making it official right now? I don't know. Are we going to do a companion? We've done these companions. I'm kind of into it. But what time is it at? I have to check the time. Okay. Know exactly. Well, there's a chance. There's a chance. We'll check the time, but there's a chance... That we'll do a companion stream to go with the PlayStation announcement, a live reaction. Who knows what we'll see? Uh, more specifics, maybe prices. Of course, we can then correspond those prices to what the Xbox is up to tomorrow. No, that's uh, March. Tomorrow? What you got here, Will? Uh, yeah, I have to check. <laughs> it's on Wednesday, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's yeah. Tuesday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I think I'm um, pretty sure that it is, is also... A, this is an old uh, article. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's also Wednesday the 16th. Wednesday. Well, we're going to get to the bottom of it right now. Yeah, Wednesday the 16th, 40-minute digital showcase. What time, Sony? Uh, 1 p.m. Pacific. Oh, yeah, we can so do that. Four. That actually lines up good for us. Okay, there you have it on Wednesday. I mean, we'll probably have another show before that, but on Wednesday, meet us here for the PlayStation event. We shall enjoy it together.